ご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Gundam News. Brought to you by Loot Crate. Use the code CACROT15 to get 15% off your next purchase and support the channel. First up are some cool things that went on pre order. Someone thought it was a good idea to turn the Goof's heat sword into a paper knife. And you know what? I didn't know I needed this in my life, but now I feel like I kinda do. I've never used a paper knife in my life before, but I feel like it would be very cathartic when I'm opening my mail.、Uh, for the record, the only mail that I still get are either bills or that slip from the mailman that says that he was at the door, rang the doorbell, but nobody opened up, so gosh, he had to take my package back with him, and now I have to go pick it up at the post office. Of course, I was home all day, the doorbell never rang, and he just couldn't be bothered to ring the actual freaking doorbell. Either that, or they just put it in front of the door for everyone to see in the rain. That happens too. <laughs> Anyways,、um, it's currently scheduled for April and will set you back 3,300 yen with taxes included. And talking about things that annoy me, P Bandai. Today's P Bandai pre orders are for the Chogokin and Robot Damashi RX78 FOO Gundam, or double O, because I don't know why, but even though I know it's for the movable Gundam, I can't help but feel like that model number would be perfect for a double O Gundam. Anyways,、um, both are scheduled for a May release, and they are two very different SKUs for the same machine. The Robot Damashi will only set you back 3,850 yen with taxes and offers you the works. It looks the part, has a lot of accessories, cage sold separately,、um, and has really good articulation. It's a cool collectible and can actually work as a toy too for that price. What will not be working as a toy is the Chogokin figure. That's definitely something you're gonna wanna keep on the shelf. And some people will probably even keep in the box.、Um, it's a super detailed RX78 with die cast parts on the insides, LED lighting, a base with its name on that can also hold all of the weapons, and all of that for a cool 22,000 yen.、Um, both are, of course, also available at the Gundam Factory Yokohama, but due to circumstances, that doesn't really help us a whole lot.、Um, if hearing that price got you sweating, No problem, they are also selling Gundam bandanas now,、uh, Char Aznabal and Xeon Color, for 2,200 yen, tax included, a piece. And I gotta say, the designs are really cool, but I don't know if it was necessary to also put that same design on a hoodie, a t shirt, a blanket, a cushion, a pouch, a mug, and of course, a coaster. Because in Japan, everything. Has to go on a coaster. Your Buster Blader doesn't deserve a slot in my deck, but I suppose it would make a good coaster for my drink. The mugs are cool though, and even though they're not P Bandai, they are part of the Bankore Bandai collection, which seems to me essentially to be the same thing as P Bandai, but just for non Gunpla things. Um, moving right along,、um, other Bancore stuff is this really cool acrylic Victory Gundam logo and e z z y Gundam logo, both available in large for 1,650 yen and small for 1,320 yen, both with a prize included and scheduled for. and all are scheduled for a March release. On to things we can actually buy right now. On the 14th, we got an army of e z z y Gundams that were released for 660 yen. Tax included. We got the Sun Goku Sojiden Zangfei God Gundam with cool red effect parts, the Kanu Uncho New Gundam with some sweet green Psycho Wave esque effect parts, and the Liu Bei Unicorn Gundam, which has a really nice red Psycho frame and also has an amazing blade that can transform between gun mode and sword mode. Or, in other words, it has two handles that you can switch between.、Um, then, for 550 yen, tax included,、um, we get the, well, we got the Trinity bike and the Bug and Butai Hei set. 
Uh, when I said an army of SD Gundams, I literally meant an army of SD Gundams. With the Bug and Butai Hei set, um, there are a total of five different variations you can make. And with the set, you can make two of those variations because, well, all of them have the same body, two bodies included, and then the five heads are included. Um, so yeah, you can make your own Gundam-inspired Warring States army. Keep in mind though, you might have noticed that all five of those machines are very differently colored, so the runners are just completely in black and you'll have to paint literally everything, because on some of them there's not even any black on there. So on to the more random bits now, Mika Akitaka has released a new Gundam Girl drawing always awesome, and they are also working on a new MS Sojo Note art book, which I will definitely keep all of you updated on. Then the National Film Archive of Japan has begun its Senkyu Hyaku Hachiju Nendai Nihon Ega Shikoto Shinse initiative. It roughly translates to Japanese movies of the 80s, uh, Trial and Rebirth, and it's a collection of 44 Japanese movies that were kinda a big deal back in the 80s, like the ones that they thought were trendsetters or the ones that they thought created a lot of buzz. And since it's in the Gundam news section, of course, Shars Counterattack is part of the lineup. Uh, good news, if you've ever wanted to date Kira, Atherin, Isaac, Diarca, or Nickel, uh, because the Gundam Cafe will be hosting a special Valentine event from the 22nd of January until the 14th of February. There will be special menu items, thank you cards to collect, pictures to collect, AR photo frames to collect, merchandise to buy, and a whole lot of it to give you the illusion of going on a date with a Gundam character. And to be honest, I would be totally into that if one of the characters actually interested me. Now, one thing you might think is a bit weird is that all of the available characters here are male. And in the West, the typical Gundam fan is between 25 and 34, is male and also an American, or at least that's what my YouTube statistics are telling me. In Japan, however, there is a sizable amount of sometimes even pretty hardcore female Gundam fans, so it's not really all that surprising that they are also catering towards them. And talking about Valentine, in a recent video, I suddenly got quite a few people asking me who my Gundam waifu is. Like, I'm sorry guys, but that kind of personal information is, you know, kind of private. But if you pay attention during my videos, I do sometimes put small hints in them. And finally, the last thing I want to have a look at is a poll that Gundam.info held with some pretty interesting results, and then a poll that's currently still ongoing. So the poll that's already over is what Japanese fans thought was the most interesting or the most amazing thing that happened in 2020 that was Gundam related. 999 people answered the poll and 34.4% thought that Gundam Build Divers Re-Rise second season was the biggest thing to happen and I can't blame them, a new Gundam anime, well, new Gundam anime, the second season to an already popular anime. I can understand why people would definitely think that was the best thing to happen. What I find kind of sad is that on the second spot, it's the Gundam Factory Yokohama. They spend so many resources making a moving, walking Gundam. That must have cost a lot. And it got beat out by 0.3% by just your normal anime. I mean, uh, I just find that kind of sad. Then on the third spot, we have the theatrical release of uh, Reconquista in G, Burley's Attack, it got 12% showing that there is still some love for Reconquista in G. Then on the fourth place we have the Gumpla 40th Anniversary Project with 9% and I can understand that people weren't super hyped about it, like when I think about the 40th Anniversary Project, like what do we get? We got another RX-78 2, we got another Sharzaku, and we got another Unicorn. Granted, all three of them were really nice kits, but at the same time, it's it wasn't anything super mind-blowing that would be better than an actual walking Gundam or like a really cool anime. Then after that, we have the 2020 Love and Peace Gundam, which 
I'm not familiar with, and then the Hello Kitty project, with which was basically like a few Hello Kitty inspired Gumblas that they made, and I think there was also a Chogokin. Um, anyways, I got 3.9%, then just Tamashi Nation 2020 with 2%, then 1.7% we have the Gundam Cafe Tokyo Brand Core, and I think this refers to the kind of remodeling of the Gundam Cafe Akihabara. I don't know how many people are up to date on this, but the AKB48 cafe kind of shut down and the Gundam cafe absorbed it. I don't know if the AKB48 cafe went bust or if there was some kind of deal with the Gundam cafe where they just bought it up, um, but that thing is no longer there and it's now just one giant Gundam cafe and I am very much looking forward to going there. Um, then, also 1.7%, but I guess slightly less is Gundam collaborations with Meiji, J-League, uh, which was the Baseball League, I believe, um, and some other things that I do not know. Uh, Ready Player One um, didn't really catch the imagination, it seems, 0.7%, and then finally Gundam Fan Club Premier Membership, or Premier Members, 0.7%, um, also not really catching the imagination. The ongoing poll then I absolutely love because they're asking about what the charm point of the Zeong is. Very topical of course with the release of the real great and these results are still ongoing. Uh, the poll is still live so you could even go there right now and vote on it. I don't know if there was a specific link to it. I know it was on the home page. Um, if there's a link to it, I'll just link it down below as well so you can go vote too. Um, and so far, I'm completely on board with the results of this. Um, we have 23 votes for the horns, you know, the, the horns on the side. Um, 28 for the Monoai, 29 votes for the size of it. 30 say that lots of verniers are the charm point of the Zeong. 51 with the mouth. We're kind of going up now. Uh, 114 people thought it was really cool that it's a like no frills mobile suit, like very down to business, like having no legs because they don't really serve a lot of purpose. Um, 174 people said that the charm point is that the skirt, well, the skirt armor has a heart shape. And then 218 people plus a Kakarot 197 voted for the wire guided arms with the five mega particle cannons as the fingers. And like I said, I totally understand it. When you look at the lower ones, the horns, the mono eye, the size, and even lots of verniers, those are things that don't immediately make you think about the Zeong. If I tell you Zeong mobile suit with a horn, you think about a Zaku commander type, you maybe think of a goof, but not the Zeong. If I tell you Monoai, I mean, just telling you Monoai, Zaku, Zaku 2, <laughs> that is the epitome of a Monoai mobile suit. A big sized mobile suit. Uh, Psycho Gundam, uh, Neo Zeong, <laughs> uh, but not the normal Zeong. Uh, lots of verniers, Zaku 2 high mobility type. Um, the mouth, that's something I can totally understand. The Zeong was like one of the first mobiles. It was the first animated mobile suit that had like a mouth gun. And, you know, it makes sense. It looks kind of cool. A little bit weird maybe, but I can see why that would be the charm point of the Zeong. Um, no frills, no decoration. I mean, I can see where they're coming from with the no legs and stuff. Um, I do feel the 08th MS team is kind of more for that, but still, I can see it. Then, heart skirt. Be honest in the comments down below. Who saw, well, who looked at the skirt of the Neo Zeong from the, Neo Zeong, who looked at the skirt of the Zeong and thought, that's a heart. I kind of had my mind blown because I was looking at the katakana of that, like, hato skato. And I was like, what, what do they mean with that? Like, the skirt is hard, hato, hard? And I was like, oh, it's heart-shaped. So that's kind of mind-blown right there. And then, yeah, wire-guided arms. If, I'm tell if I tell you a mobile suit with wire-guided arms, Zeon, that is the defining feat of the Zeon. Sure, there's also like the Zaku, uh, those Zaku prototypes that turned into the Zeon, but I think the first mobile suit everyone thinks about is definitely the Zeon. So that has been all for today's episode of Gundam News. 
I hope all of you got to see some cool new stuff. And as always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great day and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam news. Thank you.